Uh, hi there, Steve Kaufman here again. Um, I am going to continue in my series on how I learn different languages and I, I think the order is going to be, um, I can't remember, but I think it might be Italian, Portuguese, Russian, I might sneak Korean in there, and then um, Czech. But today I'm going to interrupt this series and I'm going to talk about a different subject because it's something that's kind of been on my mind today. And that is, you know, learning the basics in a language. And we often hear that it's so important to nail down the basics, to get the pronunciation right, to learn the basic phrases, the basic structures, the basic vocabulary in a language. And I am totally opposed to that idea. I think it's, and from a number of points of view, and I'm going to ramble on, I haven't made little notes here, but I'm just going to share my thoughts on the subject, and I look forward to hearing back from people on it. But first of all, I find it very difficult to learn the basics. Uh, if I look at Czech, you know, some of the most basic phrasing around I like, uh, you know, mam rad, ya mam rad, se mam rad, I mean, I like is pretty basic. It's very hard to get a hang of, or to get the hang of. It's very hard to, to get the feel of that, to make it feel natural. It's only after now almost five months of listening to a variety of content that I go back and I review some of those uh, basic phrases again, and and they're starting to think, sink in. It's the same with basic vocabulary, like. You know, very often people will try to teach you the colors, the days of the week, the months of the year, the numbers. These things are all considered basic. Those are extremely hard to learn. Numbers being by far the most difficult. I can be quite advanced in a language. And it's not for lack of trying. You know, you try to learn those things. They just don't stick. Basic vocabulary. Again, people say, well, if you learn the most common 1,000 words, that'll be 70, 80% of, of any context. Yeah, but it, it won't be the key words. And... And if you're into interesting content anyway, all of those words are going to be there. So my approach is what I would call almost a grazing approach. Like you go over the same ground from many different directions, maybe using different materials, different stories. You sometimes do difficult things. You want to get ahead. You want to challenge yourself uh, because you find it interesting. Uh, when I started in a language, I'm mostly motivated to build up my vocabulary and expose myself to the language. Um, and so once I have a bit of a sense of the language, then I can go back and, and try to, again, look at some of these so-called basic structures and I'll have a, a reference point. I think our whole approach to language learning and to education in general is far too lineal. You know, typically in school, in a language classroom, the teacher will tell you, you can only read this far in the book. You can't go any further. I mean, that's ridiculous. Why wouldn't you allow students to go further? Why wouldn't you allow people to follow their interests and go well beyond the level where the classroom is and to come back and then do something that's well below the level where the classroom is? Why do you always have to stay at the same level that's dictated by the teacher? And I don't think that just is limited to language learning. I think in many subjects, why do we have schools where everything is divided into 30 or 40 minute segments and every 30 or 40 minutes you've got to go do and uh, you got to go and do something else? Why don't you let people really focus on one area that they're interested in and take it whichever direction they want and then come back, maybe do some of the simple stuff again? In other words, the whole learning process should be much more sort of um, how would I put it organic, uh, grazing, swarming, not linear, not now I've got these basic concepts down, now I'll move to the next. Because you don't really get those basic concepts down until very often much, much later. And so you're filling in sometimes with some advanced concepts or some advanced technology or at least uh, vocabulary that you happen to remember and some of the most supposedly basic uh, vocabulary items uh, are still escape you and they kind of fill in later it's not it's not a linear process so uh, I often you know hear this about learn the basics get the basics the basics come when the whole has been 
absorbed and the brain has become more familiar with with this holistic thing called the language and slowly some of the so-called basics start to solidify simply because that you've been exposed to them so often and i remember again the words of uh, manfred spitzer that the brain requires novelty and repetition in order to learn something if you don't have novelty if you don't feed the interest that that we have in a subject then we get turned off but we do need to repeat we do need to cover the same ground again and again in order that these neurons can 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 fire so repetition is important but i think we should allow much more freedom to uh, to students to explore and to push as far as they want to push uh, and then have them come back and review again so I'm not a big fan of, of the basics. I'm not a big fan of a linear approach to education, uh, the basic building blocks. Um, as you know, I'm not a big fan of, of getting people to speak early. So nailing down the phonetics in you know phase one of your studies to me is not important. If you're doing a lot of listening, you can get a lot of exposure without having to produce the sounds so that when you do start to produce the sounds, you'll have a better feel for the language. So, uh, yeah, I just thought I'd throw that in there. Uh, avoid trying to learn the basics. It's too difficult. Rather, explore the language. Uh, explore it in the direction that you want to take it. But, uh, you know, try to cover the same ground from different directions uh, in different contexts. So it's, I personally prefer more of a generalized grazing uh, approach uh, as opposed to some kind of a linear structured approach approach to learning and, and it's true of history you know i can read a history book i don't remember much but if i read a history say i'm reading a history of, of russia or of napoleon if i read three different books or if napoleon comes up again in my history of russia and there's more places where all of these different things interconnect then this overlapping exposure it was is what's eventually going to enable me to learn the subject so that it starts to be natural and it starts to be real knowledge to me. Uh, the linear approach may be good for passing an exam, you know, cramming a bunch of facts in your head for the exam, but in terms of acquiring general knowledge, I think it's less useful. And that, and I do believe that applies to, to language learning. So that was a bit of a digression from my uh, tales of how I went about learning different languages. So thank you for listening and I look forward to your comments.